people that are arguing that banning guns is a solution here, they're ignorant, but it's invincible ignorance. There is no amount of fact, there's no amount of reason that you can ever impart to them that will change their mind. And he gives some examples of this. For instance, the places and times that have the strongest gun control laws have the highest murder rates. Take Washington, D.C., take New York City, take Chicago. All of them have strict gun control laws, and they lead the nation in murder. You look at the rate of gun ownership, It's where is it higher, rural areas or urban areas? It is higher in rural areas, but the murder rate is higher in urban areas. Uh, what about blacks and whites? The rate of gun ownership is higher among whites than it is among blacks, so blacks ought to be safer, but the murder rate is higher among blacks. And he says, in the, you look at the nation as a whole, in the 20th century, gun ownership doubled and the murder rate went down. But that is not going to convince people whose minds are already made up. Australia, they banned uh, guns in 1997, spent $500 million buying back all the privately owned firearms before the ban. Politicians promised a lower crime rate once the ban was in place. Instead, armed robberies rose significantly and home invasions rose as well. Who could have seen that coming? Assaults involving guns rose more than 25% and murders with a gun rose nearly 20%. So crimes with guns increased after the ban went into place. And reminds us of what George Washington said. This is George Washington, founding father, a free people ought to be armed. And they've got the same problem in England, where guns are banned. Guns are banned in England. And gun crime is soaring there by 35%. Last year, gun crime in England and Wales soared by 35%. Criminals use handguns in 46% more offenses the fourth year in a row to see uh, arise. So uh, England, you hear Piers Morgan out there bloviating all the time about getting rid of guns is the key. Well, they tried to do that in England and crimes with guns, just like in Australia, going through the roof. Uh, clip eight. This is uh, Jake Tapper yesterday, and then we'll get to the phones, 888-589-8840. Uh, Jake Tapper talking to Barack Obama yesterday on this issue, and man, I was watching this when it happened, and, man, the smoke started pouring out of Barack Obama's ears. He was not happy with Jake Tapper because what Jake Tapper did is he called him on the fact that this is blatant politicization of this issue. He's polit politicizing this issue. He's using it for blatantly political purposes. The Democrats did not campaign on this in 2008. He did not campaign on this in 2010. Uh, his chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, went to Eric Holder, used an expletive deleted, said you've got to shut up about gun control because it'll be lethal to our Democrat candidates in a number of vulnerable districts. So here's Jake Tapper calling Barack Obama out on gun control yesterday. It seems to a lot of observers mm -hmm. that you made the political calculation in 2008 in your first term and in 2012 not to talk about gun violence. You had your position on renewing the, the ban on semi-automatic rifles that, that then Senator Biden put into place, but you didn't do much about it. This is not the first issue, the first incident of horrific gun violence mm -hmm. of your four years. Where have you been? Well, uh, here's where I've been, Jake. Uh, I've been President of the United States dealing with the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, an auto industry on the verge of collapse, two wars. Um, I don't think I've been on vacation. And so, you know, I think all of us have to do some reflection on uh, how we prioritize um, what we do here in Washington. And as I said on Sunday, uh, you know, this should be a wake-up call for all of us to say that if we are not getting right the need to keep our children safe, then nothing else matters. Well, and Jake Tapper saying, look, if that's so important to you, where have you been for four years? I mean, where have you been? You didn't talk about this in 2008. You didn't talk about this in 2012. So suddenly now you have found a way to politicize this issue. And here's Barack Obama. You know, again, everybody says it's reprehensible to use this for some other agenda. 
You want to talk about God and prayer in schools, it's reprehensible to do it in connection with this tragedy. It's okay to talk about banning guns. That's okay. But it's not okay to talk about the issues that really do matter. And here's Barack Obama talk about politicizing this thing. He's using this tragedy to urge people, uh, urge America to raise taxes on, uh, on, the, on the job creators. Let's listen. Goodness, if, if this past week has done anything, it should just give us some perspective. I mean, if there's one thing we should have after this week, it should be a sense of perspective about what's important. And, you know, I would like to think that uh, members of their, that caucus would say to themselves, you know what, we disagree with the president on a whole bunch of things. Uh, we wish the other guy had won. Uh, we're going to fight him on a whole range of issues over the next four years. We think his philosophy is all screwed up. But right now, what the country needs is for us to compromise. That's just amazing to me. I mean, he's just, he is arguing that the Republicans ought to roll over and, and raise taxes on everybody and give him everything he wants on the debt ceiling, everything he wants on Obamacare, uh, everything he wants on Obamacare taxes just because of this tragedy. So he's the one that is politicizing it, uh, and I find that uh, pretty, uh, frankly, pretty objectionable. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Ricky, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ricky, you're on Focal Point. What's on your mind? Oh, uh, yeah. So I wanted to comment, you know, the Bible says train up a child and the way he should go shall not depart. All these shooters uh, uh, either was raised in blue states or from blue states, and uh, that's the states that kick God completely out of the state, not just out of school, but out of the state. I mean, you raise up, uh, you know, godless, atheist, communists, and they're going to grow up to be godless, atheist, communists, and the result is you're just an animal. So uh, shoot those 20 kids to these uh, Democrats and these liberal states, it's like shooting monkeys. Mm -hmm. Because why? They don't believe in God. Evolution is a religion. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point that you make, Ricky, that, uh, you know, and, th and this is one of the problems when you take the Ten Commandments off the wall of your schoolhouse and you take the Bible out of schools. Where's the reminder about the sanctity of human life? If, if every day you go into a classroom and right there on the wall it says, thou shalt not murder. And th those are instructions, those are directives from Almighty God. And it says, thou shalt not murder. What that imparts to you, what it builds into you, is a sense of the value of human life. You know, and Ricky's point is, look, if you're a Darwinian, then we are nothing more than advanced slime. That's all we are. We came out of a swamp somewhere. Uh, we're, we're, just a, we're just an ape with trousers. So there's no particular value on human life any more than there would be life or a baboon or a chimpanzee or some toad in the desert. Uh, for them uh, to think that Human beings have a status that the animal kingdom does not. is what they call speciesism. It's a form of discrimination. So when you have the, the consistent devaluation of human life, not a surprise that these kind of things would happen. Good call, Ricky. Thank you for that. Let's go to Sam in South uh, Arkansas. Sam, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Well, I had a few comments about the school shootings, uh, not just the most recent, but even the ones that didn't make the news. Uh, I want to challenge all of America um, to look up the Billboard magazine. I believe it was Billboard's number one song of the year. And Google, don't don't listen to the song. I don't want it to get any hits. Uh, I don't want it to get any popularity. But it was uh, uh, it, it voted in by uh, adults. The uh, prerequisite for voting uh, for that song of the year was uh, legal age of 18, or minimum age of 18, but Google the words. Uh, it describes the school shooting. Now, this is the number one song in the nation. It's a pop rock venue. Uh, we wonder why, and then we have people that say, God let. Yeah, God let, because as you've spoken today in I was a little bit miffed with you. You stole my phrase. Uh, <laughs> I've been saying that God was a gentleman and did, and did not invite himself where he was not 
invited. Yeah, he's he's just not going to do it. He, he he is a he is is honored to be a guest. He offers himself to be a guest. He offers his presence. He offers his power. But if it's not wanted, he is not going to force himself on people that just do not want him around. All right, listen, I appreciate the call, Sam. Thank you for that. Let's go to Tim in Savoy, Texas. Tim, you're on Focal Point. What's on your mind? Yeah, I wanted to make sure I understood you right. You said that the reason that the school shootings and stuff are happening is because God isn't there because he's not invited? That's part of it, yes. Okay, well, if I'm reading my Bible correct, uh, the Bible says that God is everywhere. That's correct. Okay. And now, I talked about this on uh, Monday, that there is a difference in the Bible between the real presence of God, because he is everywhere, his presence is everywhere. In fact, it's not possible for his presence not to be everywhere. You know, the psalmist tells us that if you go to Sheol, he's there. You go to heaven, he's there. You go to the depths of the sea, he's there. You go to the east, he's there. You go to the west. He says, there's nowhere I can go to flee from your presence. But there's a difference between that, his real presence, and his manifest presence, where his presence comes into manifestation, where his presence can be seen, where his presence is experienced, where his presence is observed, where his presence is felt. And for God's manifest presence to be there, we need to invite him to manifest himself. We need to acknowledge him. We need to trust him. We need to obey him. And then we will see not just the real presence of God, but the manifest presence of God to shield and bless and to protect. All right, listen, I appreciate the call, Tim. Uh, thank you for that. Dan, if you can hold on down to Tampa, Florida, we'll take your call coming right out of the break. And we're going to turn our attention here. Uh, we'll have calls on any subject you want, so we'll still take calls on Connecticut. We want to turn our attention to this uh, fiscal cliff thing. Uh, John Boehner's proposing that we raise taxes on everybody that makes more than a million dollars a year. It's, it's, it's worthless. It, it, it's a nothing burger, and I'll explain why. Harry Reid said we're not even going to take a vote on it. 69% uh, of the American people blame the Republicans, so I say to the Republicans, if you're going to get blamed anyway, do the right thing. Focal Point AFR Talk.